Hi, I'm Jo Howell. I'm here to talk about ceramic tiles and cyan type process. Um, this is something that I looked into a few years ago because I wanted to have a cheap but durable way of showing uh, pinhole photographs that I had taken with members of the community in Sunderland. It was necessity really that made us think of using ceramics. Um, I'm not a ceramicist myself, so I didn't really have that much background in it. I had realised that you can't um, put cyanotype process directly onto a glazed tile unless you are gelatin to the mix. Um, but the type of process I'm going to talk about today is the really, really simple process of mixing your cyanotype solutions together, um, applying them nice and quickly to the tile and then exposing them under a 20 watt UV lamp. So the exposure times um, for my tiles tend to be around about 45 minutes. The chems that I was using for this time around, because it was just a demonstration, um, are, are the last of my chemicals that I had left. So you can see I actually use a sieve to remove the mould um, from it. It doesn't really make much difference. I even used a broken tile uh, in order, you know, it literally is just an experiment to show you how it works. When I was creating the tiles for my project, of course, it was a lot, um, a lot more carefully done in order to ensure decent presentation. So it's really, really simple. I mixed approximately 25 milliliters of uh, solution A and solution B, and I'll put the chemical names underneath. And then um, just mix it around with a sponge brush, very, very quickly just brushed it across the top. Um, you can use bisque fired porcelain, anything that's still porous so it'll take in the solution itself. I work quickly when I'm working with tiles because they're so porous they go and they suck all of the chemical solution really deep into the tile. You really, really have to take your time with doing the wash process. In this case, I haven't showed you loads and loads of boring washing, but essentially what you need to do is you need to wash your tile and partially dry it at least three times. And what will happen is um, the chem that's trapped inside will start to leach up to the top. And then hopefully when you're washing it again, that'll remove the extra chem that's leached up to the top. You probably could do the exposures outside in the sun, but of course this is always going to be a guesstimate depending on how much sun you've got. You know, the difference between me doing an exposure in the UK and some of you guys doing exposures over in Australia, you know, it's phenomenally different. Our UV index isn't very good. Once I've completed the exposure and you might have to adjust this obviously it depends on your equipment I would always suggest doing test runs to figure out your timings and such what if you put it in under a uh, very cold running water and agitate your tray nice and gently so that the water is continually flowing across the top of the tile and like I say take it out let it dry a little bit put it back in for a new wash uh, fresh water and do exactly the same again. Each wash should take approximately 10 minutes each time. Don't leave the tiles in to soak because the trapped gas particles inside of the ceramic are gonna to want to escape. And what happens when they escape is that they kind of air blast off some of your uh, cyanotype chemicals, which means essentially that uh, you will end up with a fizz you'll hear it, so as soon as you hear it fizzing, you probably wanna hoi it out of the water. So it's something you could play around with, maybe you want to fizz, but for my purposes, it was ruining um, the overall image. So I, I've really tried to keep um, the effervescence, the fizz, to a bare minimum. Once it's dry, and it's gonna take at least 24 hours to dry, um, I would suggest you let it dry in a dark place if you can, and 
once you're happy that it's dry to the touch both front and back then you can use a crystal clear yacht varnish and just put a one simple very fine coat over the top it's just something to consider it's a nice cheap alternative way of presenting work and if you're really clever then you might be decide to not varnish it at all and actually um, fire it in the kiln. I do know that it's a low rate cone fire so I think it's about four that you would um, fire cyanotype at and if you get it correct then the cyanotype should go from blue to an orange kind of rust colour. I know that there are other cyanotype artists who have had a success with this. Uh, you can find them on Instagram if you just go in hashtag cyanotypes on ceramics and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about with this lovely rust colour but anyway so my main bag is obviously creating uh, photographs using cyanotype process and uh, this was kind of my first foray into a three-dimensional way of displaying it so I put all of the tiles on uh, plate stands in the window um, and they were, they were subject to quite a lot of UV light as well and they're all absolutely perfectly fine still. So I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Um, big shout out to all of the new subscribers. Thank you very much for the support. And I'm going to try to do some more work. But winter's been in and winter makes us depressed so I just couldn't be bothered. Anyway, thanks for watching.